This episode of Proper English is brought to you by Cooking with Dave and Ali and the idiom out of the frying pan and into the fire. Oh, I love cooking, I do, don't I, Ali? You do, Dave. And I love eating what you cook. <laughs> I love cooking too, but there are differences between the way that you cook and the way that I cook. There are? There are. I guess the big difference is following a recipe. I have to follow the recipe. Using every pot and pan in the kitchen, usually. Whereas, you're very much a one-pot cook, aren't you? Definitely. Keep it simple. That's my motto. Also saves on the washing up after. In this episode, we're going to take you through a couple of our favourite recipes, step by step. And if you fancy, you can try cooking the things we describe. And maybe we'll introduce you to some new vocabulary and phrasal verbs as we go. And if there are any words or phrasal verbs that you don't recognise, why not get in touch with us and let us know? Just drop us an email at properenglish or one word at sapo.pt and we'll give you a name check in next week's episode. So, what do you think we should cook for our listeners then, Ali? Mm, do you think we should do a starter and a main course? I think that'd be a great idea. One of the starters I love doing is an Italian dish. Fungi marinati, mm. or marinated mushrooms. Oh, do you remember back in the day when we lived in Kent, in the southeast of England, our friend Sarah had a dinner party for her birthday, and the idea was that all the guests should bring a dish for the meal, and you could choose a starter, a main course, or a dessert. And we chose this starter. It's very easy. Just needs a bit of space in the fridge and a couple of days to marinate or soak. Mm, get mm. all them flavours. Mm. So what do we need? What about weights and measures? Are we using metric or imperial? Now, I might have to explain that a bit, mm. because although in the UK we are officially metric... The sensible measurements, <laughs> 100 grams to a kilogram, 1,000 millilitres to a litre, that sort of thing. But we still cling on to the old imperial measures like 16 ounces to the pound for weight and 20 fluid ounces to a pint for liquids. When you say them out loud like that, they do sound a bit bonkers, don't they? They do a bit. <laughs> but it's only recently that I've got used to metric measures. It might have something to do with us living in Portugal these days. It might, you know. So, anyway, give us a list of ingredients. OK, now this is to serve four, all right? Mm -hmm. Four hundred and fifty grams or a pound of small button mushrooms, a hundred and fifty milliliters, a quarter of a pint of white wine vinegar, six black peppercorns, two cloves of garlic crushed, seventy-five milliliters each, three fluid ounces of olive oil and water, one teaspoonful of salt and a bay leaf. We've got all that stuff, so what do we do now? Well, you know what? It's pretty simple, really. You just wipe the mushrooms clean, no need to peel them, mm -hmm. and discard the stems. They have no part in this particular recipe. Mm, I guess we could keep them to add them to the main course. Waste not, want not. Oh, yeah. Why not? So, anyway, you put all the other ingredients in a pan. The white wine vinegar, olive oil, water, peppercorns. Everything? Yep, the whole lot. Put the pan on the hob and bring the whole lot to a gentle boil, then lower the heat and simmer for quarter of an hour. Then add the mushrooms and continue to simmer for a further five minutes. Remove the pan from the heat and allow the concoction to cool. Then put the mushrooms and everything into a bowl and put it in the refrigerator to marinate for a couple of days. When you're ready to eat them, drain and serve. Delizioso. Mm, I'm hungry. And on to the main course. Shepherd's pie. Oh, yeah. Now you're talking. Minced lamb and onions and carrots in a rich gravy topped with creamy mashed potato. I'm going to cause a bit of controversy here. Mm -hmm. It was called cottage pie before it was called shepherd's pie. You are joking. Nope. But cottage pie is with minced beef and shepherd's pie is with minced lamb. Ah, well, 
Back in the 18th century, it was just called cottage pie, whether it was beef, mutton or lamb. The term shepherd's pie began to be used in the 19th century synonymously with cottage pie. Mm. And it was only in the 20th century that it became associated exclusively with minced lamb. Wow. There you go. So, anyway, let's get on with the ingredients. A couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil. One large onion, finely chopped. A tablespoonful of plain flour. 500 grams or about a pound of lamb mince and two bay leaves. A couple of sprigs of fresh thyme and a couple of carrots, peeled and diced. 450 millilitres or 16 fluid ounces of chicken, beef or lamb stock from a stock cube. And a tablespoon of tomato puree. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce or... If you're a Sheffield like me, it's got to be Henderson's. Henderson's relish, that is, isn't Oh, it? yes. Salt and freshly ground black pepper. You can also add a dash of anchovy sauce. And if you fancy, a dollop of mushroom ketchup, just to darken the gravy and thicken it up. And for the mash... 700 grams or round about a pound and nine ounces of potatoes, peeled and cut into halves or quarters. 55 millilitres, that's two fluid ounces of milk. 85 grams or three ounces of butter or margarine. And salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. So what did we do with that lot, Dave? Well, Ali, to start, we heat the vegetable oil in a large pan. Add the onion and cook for five minutes or so until the onion turns translucent. Then add the mince, stirring and breaking it up until it's browned all over and mixed up with the onion. Then stir in the flour to thicken it up. You can add diced carrots and the mushroom stalks from the starter at this point. Mm -hmm. Add the bay leaves, thyme, tomato puree and anchovy sauce if you've got it and stir a little bit more. Add the stock and the hendos. And bring the mixture to the boil, adding a pinch of salt and pepper and let it simmer for about 45 minutes, stirring regularly. Then preheat the oven to 200 degrees centigrade. That's 180 degrees centigrade if you have a fan oven. Or gas mark six if you have an old gas oven. For the mashed potato topping, boil the potatoes until they're really soft. Then drain, add the milk and butter or marge, and then mash until smooth and season with salt and pepper. It's always salt and pepper, isn't it? It this, is. Isn't it? No, I like a bit of salt and pepper. I, love, I prefer pepper myself, I mm. must admit. Salt's not very good for you. It raises your blood pressure, apparently. <laughs> Finally, pour the meat mixture into an oven-proof dish and spread the mash on top. Smooth over and mark with a fork. Or maybe put some cheese on top of it. Oh, awesome. Put the dish, paprika as well. Put the dish into the oven and cook until the surface of the mashed potato or the cheese is golden brown. Oh, I'm so hungry. I've just had my tea. <laughs> and now it's time for Idiom of the Week. Idiom of the Week? You know what? Uh, what, eh, uh, Judy? Yeah, her. Uh. Oh, what's she done now? Is she on her high horse again? No, it's worse this time. Oh dear, do tell. Well, you won't believe it. She's been seeing that Mr White from number 10. Oh, I don't care for him. Too clever by half he is. Well, they've been seeing a lot of each other, so I've heard. A lot? Ooh. Well, really? Only Judy? Well, she's the jealous sort. And Mr White, he likes to chat with that nice lady at the newsagents. Putting her eyes. Oh, yes. And Judy, she caught him laughing with that nice lady in the newsagents. Oh, I like her. Furious, Judy was. Knocked over all magazines. <gasps> and Mr White chased after her, tried to apologise, and Judy screamed at him in the street. Very embarrassing. Oh, I say. And locked him out of his own house. Oh. <gasps> so... He went to apologise to that nice lady. Well, you would. And she was even more furious with him than Judy was. Well, I never. What a temper. I'd never have thought it. I know. They say the quiet ones are the worst. They do. So, 
what we used to think of as the nice lady. Not anymore. Told him he'd got to pay for the damage for all the magazines. <gasps> Talk about out of the frying pan and into the fire. You're not kidding. Oh, I feel quite sorry for Mr. White. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. This describes a situation where you think you've escaped one danger or disaster. Only to find yourself in a different or worse one. Best avoided. Oh yeah, terrible. And here we are at the end of another episode of Proper English. As always, we hope you've enjoyed listening in on our conversation. We really do. Why not recommend us to a friend? Or a family member. Or a fellow student. It makes us so happy when we get new subscribers. And don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to us on your favourite podcast app. We also love getting feedback, so why not get in touch? Ask us questions about vocabulary in this episode that is unfamiliar to you. Tell us what you'd like us to talk about in future episodes. But how, Ali? How? Well, as I said earlier, our email address is properenglish or one word at sapo.pt. Or you can go to Instagram or Twitter or Facebook if you have them. So until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me too. And thank you for listening to Proper English. English. Judy let him back in house, though, eventually. Well, I should think so, too. It's his house.